What's up? What's going on out there, hyenas? Cuzzies? Cuzzy wuzzies? Chris Stefano, Giannis Pappas, another episode of History Hyenas, and do we have wild tales to tell you? Woo! We had a good, good time. We took the history of hyenas down south. Hyenas really don't go down south that much. No, we invaded. We went past the Mason-Dixon line. We went into the Confederacy. Just to make sure they're not trying to rise up again. If they do, we're coming with our Jordans. We're beating them right back down. Bam! Yeah, we're Union boys. We marched down there. Um, we saw some great stuff. Uh, Giannis uh, got booked on a gig down there. Um, and then he asked me if I wanted to come open up for him, which was disrespectful. <laughs> um, and uh, But I did it anyway because, you know, I'm a true gay. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and um, and it was great, man. We were in this little town called Winchester, Virginia. Beautiful town. Beautiful town, cause yeah. It was I, I love how the guy that booked me was like, "How did you get Chris DiStefano to come up here for such little money?" Yeah, I was like, "Cause we're going on history tours, history bad. tours." But then you know, people will be people. Then he asked me to come back to Virginia for fifty bucks. Yeah. Next month, it's not so. like he was paying me a lot of money. I was like, "Yo, you, you should be asking yourself how you got me for such little money." Yeah, cause because my career is not that great. That's why. Yeah, but it's gonna change now. We had a good time. I know we were gonna. We said we were gonna talk about the Battle of Crete, yes. which we will get to. One hundred percent. But we called an audible because all this is fresh in our mind, and we had a wild gay weekend. Yeah. I mean, we were skipping around in those battlefields. Yeah. We had them all to ourselves because yeah. of the weather. Yeah. Which made it even a better experience to experience these battlefields during this fog and this rain that we had this. Yeah, weekend. Yeah, because it felt like you know, it felt like a. Like it was somber, you know, it was somber and it was like there was a lot of death around the battlefield, you know, so it was good that it was raining. I mean, Giannis was upset because his Jordans got ruined, but what are you going to do? What are you you know, do? I mean, Giannis is a fuck. Let me tell you how wild Giannis the Greek Papas is. So first of all, we go to Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. That's where we st we went first. We drove Giannis. We had a show. Here's what happened. We left Friday. OK, from New York. Giannis had a show in a diner on, in New Jersey Friday night because like he said, his career is going well. So it's a dog benefit. It was a dog. Yeah, Giannis loves dogs. Yeah, was anything for nature and dogs, Yanni Papi is in. So, so we we go to this we go to this benefit. Um, do the do do uh, uh some comedy at this benefit. I fucking bombed. Giannis killed. You didn't bomb. I bombed cuts. I bombed. bombed. I got into a fight with one of the people. I told them I would kill their cats. Oh. Yeah, I got into a yeah, but um, you know, then uh, so so we do, you know we go we were at the diner. Um, you know, was, you know, we didn't, we, there was a couple of cuties with booties there, but you know, we just, we, we, we marched on cause we knew that we had to invade the South, um, the <laughs> next morning. So we wanted to be up there, you know, cause we didn't want a uh, <clears throat> general grant to, uh, to be upset with us. So we start driving and you, when you invade, you want to do it under the cover at night. You want to do it under the cover. Well, you want to move your troops under the cover, cover at night. At you night. want to invade bright and early. Yeah. The crack of dawn. You want to be out there. You want to be. You want to be busting heads. But when we when we when we mobilize, you're right. Under mobilize. You got to mobilize under darkness. So right. we mobilize in Giannis's 2018 BMW. Yeah, we marched up in the BMW, just like the Union troops did in the Civil War. Um, it's a nice piece, that yeah, car. It was no, a nice piece. Listening to Kings of Leon jerking I mean, off. They must have hated us. We were rolling around in a white. How stereotypical could we be? White BMW with pink license plate covers, oh and then we God. get out with your gelled hair, and I got my Yankee hat on. Oh my God, they were grossed out. Yeah, the the city of Winchester, Virginia, thought they were being invaded by Staten Island. And <laughs> then when we went to the Battle of Antietam, which we'll tell you about, great, huge battlefield. Uh, we actually bought Union Civil War hats, yes, and we, we put them on crooked. Yeah, we put them on crooked <laughs> because we felt, as New Yorkers, as a new, if this is a true New York regiment of the Union Army, we would be, we would march into every southern town with our Civil War hats to the side, Jordans pumping fucking freestyle music. That's right. That's and this go. is a good point to plug what we're about to do right now. We love you so much. We just want to say thank you for your service. We've launched our Patreon page. A lot of you are already messaging us about how much you love history hyenas, how you're a hyena bad, how you're wild, you love history. Guess what we're going to do for you on the Patreon page? We made videos of all of that. Behind the scenes tour videos with our hats on, our Union Boy hats on, yep. crooked and all that, and they're going to be available on our Patreon page. Yeah, anything we talk about today on the podcast even in the whether it be the first half an hour that's free or the second half uh, the second half hour that's only for our Patreon members everything we talk about we made a video of and you can see that on if you go to patreon.com backslash Bay Ridge Boys and become a member of our Cuds community you could see all that but yo so we go to Gettysburg right we go up there show up looking at the battlefield wait but you got to tell them first how wild we are we didn't plan any of this no 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 we did not plan okay. a, a stitch we didn't plan a goddamn thing no this was all 
literally we're driving we're trying to drive from the diner in new jersey to winchester virginia we see a sign for gettysburg we're like we're going on hotel tonight not a sponsor but a good app and we're like we'll get in a room we're going to gettysburg a lot of people always ask can i be wild am i a hyena do something like that we just were driving we didn't have a plan we didn't have a hotel room we had nothing we had our hotels from the venue uh, the next day and the next day after that. But for tonight, we're like, we're just going south. Yeah. We're marching south and figuring it out. And then when it started raining, you saw Gettysburg and we said, let's get a hotel. We're going to go to Gettysburg. Let's get a hotel. And Giannis, you know, at, at first Giannis was like, um, you know, he wanted to get two separate rooms. But because I know Gettysburg's haunted, I want to stay in the room with Giannis. <laughs> so we just got one room with two beds. And that and that Giannis helped me out with that because, you know, I'm scared of ghosts. Cause yeah. Yeah. I remember when I went to Maryland with you and I we, I woke up and I just saw you standing there freaking out. Yeah. Were you just having night terrors? Yeah, I was having night terrors. And by the way, you know, I always forget to say who's in the room. Of course, we got our two regulars, Isis Face and the White Wasp. But now... Bardo uh, Church. Bardo Church. Uh, Bardo Church, White Wasp, and Zach, Isis Face question mark last name but then like a waft smell of pepperoni just came just into came the room in, and now we have you know once and in a i looked over guess, and why and why because it's mini mussolini aka jim serpico <laughs> <laughs> is in the building so we got our regular cast of characters now we got a complete team we got the a team the gay team the starting five are in here right now that's right so now it's a podcast baby as that's Mr. right Panos would say that's right um so yeah, so we we go to get we're in. Gettysburg. We had no plan, and it was actually your idea. Yeah, it was actually your idea because yeah, you started googling. You're like, "Yo, are we close to Gettysburg?" Yeah, because I'm a big history buff. Man. Yeah, and then you Google and you're like, "Yeah, we are." Boom, yeah. it's not too far out of the way. We're fucking, and we got so pumped. Pumped. You were sleeping, and then we're like, "We're doing Gettysburg tomorrow." Bad. Bad. Yep. We woke up. What we do? We woke up. We coughed up. You tried to have some coffee from the hotel, and you threw up in the parking yeah, lot. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, it tastes like dirt and water. That's the thing about New York, dude. You just, coffee's good everywhere here. Over yeah. there, it's like you got to go get good coffee. Yeah, I mean, Giannis, you know, we, we pulled over at some coffee shop off the side of the road in Gettysburg. Nice, they're nice little quaint town. And uh, Giannis pulled over in a no parking any time uh, uh, pathway because he just doesn't give a shit. And I feel like you don't get tickets. Like, you want to get a ticket there. And in, in, in a place like Gettysburg... You know, you're not going to get a seventy-five dollar ticket and a boot on your car. You're just going to get a, you're just going to get a note that says, "Thank you for visiting Gettysburg. Please donate ten dollars." <laughs> exactly. That, that's what a ticket. That's what a parking ticket is in Gettysburg. Have PA. you ever, Have you ever got a parking ticket outside of New York? They're hilarious. Yeah, they're, they're cute. They're cute. It's like in D.C. that like you get a parking ticket. It's thirty-five bucks. You're yeah. like, I'm just going to leave this here for four years. <laughs> yeah. Because it'll take four years to equal what a parking ticket in New York for one night would be. Exactly. Yeah. Um. So ticket me up. I don't care Gettysburg. So we go, we go, we get, we we go to the uh, uh, Gettysburg uh, National um, Park Service. The 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 what was that building called that we went to? The, the visitor center. Visitor the center. visitor center, which looked like an NBA arena. I, I mean, mean, when you get outside New York, the space that people have in this country to yeah. build. I mean, this visitor center literally looked like where the Golden State Warriors play. I mean, a visitor center anywhere in New York is in the fucking train station, like it's in a it's in a hot dog cart. Everything is just bigger. You yeah. go to church out there, it's like in an arena. Yeah. You know, you go here, the church is like 40 people. You go out there, it's like Joel Osteen in front of 18,000 fans. There's just no room. There's no not enough room for it in New York. They spread out out there bad. So we get to Gettysburg. First of all, um, some of the weapons that were used in the Civil War were riot. <laughs> I mean, I would much rather fight. I would much rather, like... They have weapons now that can just evaporate you as a human being. Like they'll suck the they'll suck the heat out of the air, and you'll just suffocate. I'd rather do that than I mean these people were getting sh these people were getting cannonballs to their faces and into their stomachs. I mean guys had legit holes in their bodies in these battles of uh, the 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 battle wounds we saw in Gettysburg, PA. I mean That's you get a stabbed great point. with a bayonet, yeah. get hit with a sword, yeah. In Gettysburg, the 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 um the canisters. Yeah, those canisters. Those canisters. They got like these mini. They got like all sizes. They come in different sizes. Remember, yeah. they had like the little ones that they spray out. Yes. And the guy was like, "These ones would actually make you evaporate because yeah. if you get hit with like ten, they just spread that, out." They called just, that the money shot. The, <laughs> yeah, that's what the union called that. Yeah. So yeah. they had the uh, and they're just balls, and then yeah. the, the the artillery rounds are like thick iron. They would just blow your leg clean off. Clean off. It was probably the first war. Probably the first war. Or that time period where heavy artillery started being—they didn't have heavy. They had cannonballs and stuff, but that was it. You didn't. You couldn't really aim with a cannonball. You just shot it up and just hoped to hit a ship. No, this was like accuracy. Yeah. And a, a lot, a lot of the shit that was happening, uh, like the, from the first battle that we saw. In, first of all, Gettysburg was the bloodiest battle of the Civil War. The the most men 
died there over the course of the battles. I thought that was battle. Antietam. Antietam was the was the most people that died in one day. Yeah. Twenty three thousand died in one day in Antietam. Yeah. Fifty three thousand died over the course of three days at Gettysburg. Boom, you just so, learned something. Yeah, cuz at that time, at the time of the Battle of Gettysburg, more people had died. More Americans died in the Battle of Gettysburg alone than all of the wars America had had up until that point combined. Wow. Which is a wild stat. That is fucking wild. Wild, wild, wild. And you know, it's funny, at the beginning of the Civil War, there was like this, um, I think he was the mayor. He was a mayor somewhere in Texas mm -hmm. or a state congressman or something, mm -hmm. Texas. And he thought, everyone thought the Civil War was going to last like... 90 days. About, about, yeah, about three months. 90 I'll days. About, I'll say that Civil War going to last about three months. And uh, he said, you know, yeah, I'll be able to just wipe up the blood with like a pocket napkin. That's what he said, a pocket that's napkin. That's what he thought was going to be popular. Well, nah, dude. Pretty big pocket napkin. Pretty, you're going to need a big. you got a pocket napkin that size. You, you better get it from Costco. <laughs> <laughs> you better get it from Costco if you get because that was a lot of blood. Yeah. So we're going around the battlefield of Gettysburg, which is, I mean, it's, it's, you could sense like the de the death there. It's it's a weird thing to say, but like if you've been there, you like you could just feel the death. And you know me, I well, it's because you ghosts. believe in ghosts. Yeah. yeah, I felt I felt a couple of ghosts get on my hood and shit. But thank God I had Giannis and Jesus Christ there to tell me that you know ghosts aren't real allegedly. But one of the I mean the the way I can describe Giannis Papas, who Giannis Papas is, as as you know a, a TBG true blue gay, um, <laughs> and just you know uh, uh you know feta cheese Freddy Giannis Papas, just a New York scum that he is. We were behind union lines. Let me preface. Well, yeah, but yeah, because look, that you just okay. what you did was just a contradiction. You you said I'm a scum of a piece of shit, but then you said we're behind union lines. Okay, I I did the right thing. Yes, you he did do the right thing, but we were behind union lines. So at least I have to give him this credit. And we do have video of this. If you go on our Patreon dot com backslash Bay Ridge Boys, the only way you can see this video, we were at uh, it was called Little Round Top. And it was this beautiful uh, observation point at the height of the uh, one of the hills at the Battle of Gettysburg where the Union Army bunkered down and was taken. Um, a lot of men died there. They were taken. And it was mostly the New York Regiment, by the way. Mostly the New York a Regiment. Lot in all those battles. Mo yeah, New Bowery York boys fucking represented. Yeah, cause. we just come through. That's what it is. Yeah. But the new this is a lot of the New York Regiment taking direct fire, direct sniper fire from Confederate snipers at the, a specific uh, point in Battle of Gettysburg called Little Round Top. I, I'm taking videos of it for you guys, for the fans. I'm just sucking, you know, soaking in the energy of it, kind of really kind of getting actually a little emotional. I turn around. Giannis is taking a piss on one of the sacred rocks of the Battle of Gettysburg, just full, full. <laughs> I, I will say this. It was beyond union lines, and honestly, Giannis, you got nice flow. I will say you got a healthy prostate. <laughs> I got prostate. a healthy prostate, right? Yeah, it was raining, but I could I could. You tell. can hear it hitting the rock yeah, yeah, hard. Yeah. So it's like, you, you know, thought it was raining hard out. I thought it was raining hard, yeah. and I thought, I was like, how come this rains, woman? It's because you were pissing on my ankle. <laughs> that's what it was. So, I mean, at least he did it behind union lines, but I mean, just, just so you know, that's the kind of, people ask, how do you be wild? How do you be a hyena? If you want to be a hyena, you go take a piss on the Gettysburg National Battlefield. That's hyena activity. And probably ja a jailable offense when somebody hears this i pissed on two you pissed on two and i wanted to yeah all right like that's a part of the story he didn't tell you there was something in me i don't know look me and chrissy the thing we love i think we share the love for how much we love history and like i, I never tire from doing the tour i never tire at and all. there was something deep in me right that wanted to piss on the battlefields and i don't know why it's yeah. like I wanted to be part of. I wanted to leave something there. Like I wanted to just yeah. make my mark and just be part of it. Spray, spray a rock. I yeah. just wanted to piss on it because I felt like it's history and it, you know I should leave my DNA there. Yeah, I wanted to be a part of. It. I'm a true blue American, so I pissed on that yeah. one and I pissed in an Antietam. No, you're a TBA and a TBG, guaranteed. True blue American, true blue gay. But I pissed, I pissed in an Antietam too. Remember? You, pissed, you did piss in an Antietam, and that was in Confederate line, so that was you know a little more disrespectful. You, I, you're going to be haunted by the ghost of Stonewall Jackson for the rest of your life for pissing on Confederate lines at the Battle of. Antietam. I also spit in the uh, in the in the cemetery. You did spit I in spit, the cemetery, but I mean, it was on a Confederate. Yeah, it was on a Confederate. On a conf I mean, the yeah. disrespect, and we again, we have videos of all this fucking absolute savagery that uh that Giannis did this weekend but you know what to be honest with you I don't worry I I don't think even the soldiers the dead soldiers who were watching over us when we were touring those battlefields I don't think that they even cared because the amount of shit and piss that was left behind on those battlefields oh. must have been astounding I mean this is a history podcast it's also a nature podcast I mean and when you got to fucking you when, when you got to do you know what mother nature intended you to do and you got to drop a shit and drop a piss that's going to happen in the middle of a battle. I mean, you can't hold your bladder when you got Confederate gunfire whizzing past your head, right? There's no way. The, th the thing that people don't know about battle is almost everyone 
yeah. pisses and shits themselves yeah. during battle. And by, you and, lose and, control. And let of your me just clarify: Giannis and I don't know either. Okay, we've heard this through we Giannis's dad. My dad told me that war hero. Yeah, he said a lot of people. Yeah. He said a lot of the kids pissed. They yeah, just I, I don't. I had diarrhea the night of my Comedy Central special, so you could imagine what would happen if I was in a fucking Confederate Civil War battle. I mean, I would shit out my organs. Is that just not an example of how? Men have changed. Oh, big time. Especially me, like I was worried about my Jordans in the rain and stuff. Yeah. And I was getting a little chilly. I was yeah. like, it's chilly out here. You didn't want to get out. You didn't want to get out when, to view Little Round Top because you said it was raining. Yeah. You're like, I don't know, cuz. And then I remembered, wet. I was like, oh, we have umbrellas. Yeah. So then I like, grabbed our umbrellas and we just looked like fucking two Mary Poppins rolling up a little bit. Where yeah. back in the day, these union shows is fucking spitting tobacco on the yeah. floor, climbing up there with snipers aimed at them yeah. in probably three degree weather. I climbed down one rock, one rock embankment to read a plaque. So it's like, if there's the sign says, <laughs> Please climb down rock embankment to read the plaque. And I climb down, and you know, it's like, be careful. <laughs> Giannis is like, be careful. It's slippery. And it's like, in first of all, here's what Giannis and I both know, and this is just a fact. We would have been in the Union Army, for sure. We would have fought with the boys in blue. I mean, we have to. We're northern, we're northern boys. We would have we would have had a good time marching down. We you Giannis and I would have made the rest of our uh uh so fellow soldiers laugh a lot. They would have laughed a lot. And in training, we would have been laughing, you know, having a good time. People would have really liked us. The very first time we got deployed to battle, we were both going to get shot in the head and killed Dead. on sight immediately by the enemy because we have no idea what the fuck we're doing. No, or we're just going to desert. Once or, once the shots are fired, we're running. Yeah, I mean, I would desert. I'm a puss. If I walked, one, if I walked past one bakery... If I walked past one Southern bakery, if I just saw one nice piece of, piece of Southern puss that showed any interest, I was going to desert. I mean, you could hang me, but to be honest with you, like I don't want to live in a world where I can't eat chocolate cakes or fucking bang fat chicks. The uh, Southern charm is really sexy. Beautiful, though, no? the Southern charm. It's fucking beautiful. Being being in the South kind of makes it slows everything down. It's peaceful. My anxiety was down. The blood yeah. pressure was down. But then, I mean, then we started eating meat and cheese and shit. And yeah. it probably went back up. We ate like shit. Yeah, we did eat bad. The thing that a lot of people never really think about is like, dude, these soldiers marched where they had to go. Yes. The battle had, and look, those soldiers, all the soldiers until the until the until the freed slaves got into the um, yeah army the emancipation proclamation. We're talking about white dudes running yeah. and walking. That's why these battles took so long. Yeah, white dudes are slow. Well, I mean, yeah, white just, dudes are slow. Yeah, that's why they, to to run towards each other is probably yeah, fucking I mean, took on. forever. Dude, think about Matt Scalabrini trying to fucking you know lead a charge. He's I mean, just slow. You know, it's bad. Yeah, it's uh, like watching a marathon runner try to sprint. And a lot, see, a lot of the things, and see. Here's the thing. The Union had a lot more soldiers, of course. We had more states, in, you know, in the Union that, that you know, con Confederate had less states that seceded. But, you know, the war was in the South. So when you come up here in the North, there's not really any Civil War history. The most Northern battle, I believe, was Gettysburg. They said that there was a little skirmish in New Hampshire or Vermont, but like, oh, in Vermont, I meant. But uh, the, the, the real, the truest Northern battle was... Uh, was Gettysburg because the war was fought in the South because the South was the one that was seceding from the Union. So we had the Union had to go invade the South. So we got you had guys marching all the way from Deer Isle, Maine. That was the most northern place that the soldiers came from for the Union all the way down to northern Florida. That's a long That's a fucking walk. long walk, cuz. Yeah. That's a long That's walk. a long stroll. I mean, because if they had Fitbits on, yeah. they would be champs. <laughs> I mean, listen, if some of those Civil War soldiers were wearing Fitbits, yeah. yo, you would have, you, there's no way you're breaking those steps record. Good way to get in shape right before you get your head blown off. Yeah, I mean, I can't At least imagine. those guys died fit. Yeah. They died fit and yeah. cute. And listen, I, we saw some pictures. A lot, some of these, some of these Civil War soldiers, cute. Oh, nobody <laughs> fat. No, none of them were fat. None of them, none of them were, uh, you know, they don't look like us. Like, 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 first of all, the, the union hat that we bought that, that, uh, the union hats that I bought for Giannis and I, that, uh, that we bought at the battle of Antietam, that we have videos of it on our, uh, on our Patreon page. Um, they didn't even fit my head. I got the biggest size they had XL and it didn't even fit my head. So that just goes to show you like my size and weight, having a size 38 waist wouldn't have been something that was even, I would have had to, I would have just had to fight with no pants on. There were really no fat. So when you see the old pictures of old soldiers in the civil war, you don't see anyone overweight. No, nobody. nobody. And they had nice looking uniforms. The civil war, the union had nice looking uniforms better than the South. I they think. looked similar except for gray and blue, gray and blue. Yeah. And here's 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 how you know Giannis. If there's ever any doubt that Giannis isn't is in fact a TBG, we had we had a uh, a Civil War guide 
with us uh, in the Battle of Gettysburg. We got we only got to uh, talk to him for about 15 minutes. So I was asking a lot of questions about, you know, what was the mindset of these soldiers and and what you know, what kind of things were they thinking about? Tell me about like how Robert E. Lee would outflank General McClellan and tell me about this and that. And then when Giannis got the floor, he asked them um, what kind of boots they wore and if the boots were comfortable and you know, if if the, if the, if who made who picked the fashion for the Union, and if the Confederate soldiers was there a nicer boot on a Confederate soldier than a Union soldier? Because so like, if I'm gonna die on a battlefield, I'm gonna look cute. Yeah, there's no look, there's no question yeah. about it. On the day of my death, I'm gonna look cute. Yeah, there's I no mean, way. We're asking like the what, even the even the the tour guide was like, um, uh, there's pretty much your standard boot, and you're like, yeah, but is it more like a fry boot? <laughs> Um, is it more, is it wing tipped? Is it wing tipped? Is it red wing? Is it more like a Timberland? Does like, it have what? a nice sole to give me a little height? Yeah, like what kind of lift are we talking about here? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the guy couldn't believe it. Yo. Shout out to Chris from Gettysburg Visitor Center. Good dude. Yeah, yeah dude. Good, good, dude. good dude. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there's a lot of gays we came of gays. into. Yeah, yeah, but who cares? Yeah, I fucking I mean, love gays. We're I mean, true blue gay. gays. Yeah, we're a couple of TBGs. We are. Yeah. What are you gonna do? Yeah, it's fucking the best. Being gay is the best. Yeah, um, but these dudes marched far, yeah. far, far, far and long, far and long. Deep into enemy. Some territory. of them had horseback, but you know what the surprising thing that we learned about was, what? and it makes sense. The South at the beginning of the war mm -hmm. had the more experienced soldiers, yes, especially the cavalry men, because these guys all grew up around horses on horses. The guys in the North, they're city boys. City they don't folk. roll around on fucking horses. No, I mean like the, it's pretty much how it is today. Like the North, like you know, we're Northern Yankees. What do we do? We sit in Starbucks. You know, we talk about shit. I mean, we, me and Giannis are, you know, we're, we're two king cucks that just live in the North. Where the South, those are the boys. I mean, they're they're on RVs. You know, they're working in the fields. I mean, and even still to this day, I bet you most of the army, uh, you know, the ones that they send, like Green Rangers and Marines, they come from the South. Yeah. It's got some Kentucky, Louisiana, Florida, Alabama. These are like the strong men of this country, usually our Southern boys. It was the same. It was the same in the Civil War. It's just, you know, the North, we just had so many more people. Yeah. That's the thing. And, yo, and, you know, Robert E. Lee fought, uh, of course, he was the leader of the uh, Confederate Army, but um, we almost had him for the Union. He we was the had top the choice. He was, the, he was Lincoln's top choice. And you know what? Robert E. Lee was a secessionist. Yes. I mean, he no, he was against secession. Right. He was against secession, yeah. and he was against slavery, personally, morally. The reason why he chose to fight for the South is he just could not take the thought of invading his homeland, his own homeland. He's yeah. that's how much of a Virginian he was. It, yeah, well, I mean, to be honest. So maybe that's why they lost the war, because their head dude was kind of he you know, he was lukewarm in his heart about that's the whole true. thing. He didn't have a great cause. That's true. Yeah, he, he really I mean he was compassionate about it, but because him and Stonewall Jacks, who was a cutie? Yo, Thomas Stonewall Jackson. Who who was a really genius military maneuverer. Probably the best, probably this Lee, what they say was the best, and then uh Stonewall Jackson was the second best, or maybe the best. A military leader of the entire Civil War. Yeah, that's why they called Stonewall. Stonewall. He just he held the fucking he, line. He held it because I mean, no matter what, he was holding strong, and he was dope at outflanking. He was dope at uh, having having his soldiers fight for him. Because I think that's that's what a good general is. I think is you got to make sure you got to you got to convince your soldiers that they may die, but if they're going to die, they're going to not die in vain, and they're going to die for you. And I think Stonewall Jackson could do that probably better than anyone else because because the Union uh, generals. Lincoln Lincoln had to go through like six generals before they got to Ulysses S. Grant. They were and he was like a failure. He he had to work a lot of those generals worked their way up. They yeah. weren't like generals to start like 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 yeah. Robert E. Lee. They were just guys who were unsuccessful in life. Fucking Ulysses Grant was like a failure, a drunk. He was a failure even at the end of his life, even after he became president, Ulysses S. Grant. Mark Twain wrote his autobiography just so he could make money to give to Ulysses S. Grant. I mean, he always fucked up. Yeah. Right? But he was good. He won the Civil War, you know, because he, he basically all all that was 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 the Union soldiers wanted somebody to fight for. Because, listen, back in the 1800s, uh, in the mid-1800s, I mean, there's no cameras. You know, there's really, like, not a lot of ways to keep track. I mean, guys would desert every day. Yeah. And once the morale of the troops goes away, that was that's why, because a, a lot of people think, like, why would, why the fuck, would the Confederate Army attack the North? Why would you do that? The North is coming to you. Why? Who cares? Why would you ever go into the North? You don't want to be a part of that country anyway. You want to be part of your own country. But the reason why Robert E. Lee decided to attack Gettysburg, because he said, if we can get a victory in the North, 
just a, just to even if we edge it out by the skin of our teeth or just show that we are a powerhouse to be dealt with, we can break the morale of the Union troops and maybe force Abraham Lincoln to just recognize us as our own country and end the war. Yeah. So that's how much morale meant. It's the same thing at the Battle of Gettysburg. There's a famous charge called Pickett's Charge. And basically Pickett lost his entire battalion because they just ran down the – like it's like – because a lot of war is flanking, outflanking. It's like a chess game. N very rarely is it just somebody ramming it down the middle and just running like fucking savage wild maniacs towards enemy fire. But Pickett's charge. And they call that move the old Emmett Smith. Fucking barrel him over. Head down. Yeah. Boom. Refrigerator Perry. So why so why Pickett did that was because he felt if he could even just get I think he I think he started charging with a hundred men. I, that was just a random number. I mean, we don't fact check. You, I mean, you know, you, just, I mean, yeah. I just threw a number. There's a lot of guys out there. A hundo Come sounds good. Yeah. Hundo sounds. Listen, you weren't there. Maybe you heard on Google. You maybe you can Google right now and find out that it wasn't a hundred men. But you weren't fucking there. I'm gonna say it was a hundred men. I was there. I fucking stepped in Giannis's piss <laughs> on the ba on the battlefield. So Pickett, why he did that is he knew that he was gonna die. His most of his men were gonna die, but he f felt. It would break the Union's morale to see these Confederate soldiers running full speed ahead and scare the Union Army and also build up the morale of the Confederates behind Pickett to also want to advance. Long story short, everybody got killed in Pickett's charge. Nobody in the Confederate Army would want to do that because it was a suicide mission, and the Union just won the Battle of Gettysburg. They got fucked up. Yeah. yeah. They got mowed down by those pellets. Yeah. Those canisters, those those fucking sm smaller yeah. canisters. They just sprayed them. It they said gross. that the whole line would just, you could see the line moving forward just disappear or as they just got down, sprayed like down. Because we had the higher ground. That's we had the is. higher ground in Pickett's Charge. All war is about is the higher ground, yeah. especially in that time. Is it, Who's got the higher ground? And it's easier to fight on the defense than the offense. It's all def def defense. Defense wins championships. Defense wins wars. Defense just easier because if you're charging, you got to take lead. You're going to you're gonna choose some yeah. lead if you're coming forward. You're going to choose some, and it's exhausting. Yeah. I mean, you know, to run, you're, you just walked from you just walked from Massachusetts to Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Now you got to charge at these Confederate nut jobs. Yeah. I mean, it ain't easy. Cause. You slept outside. I yeah. mean, what do you eat? Eating like dried beef jerky, yeah, whatever crap they had. I mean, they yeah, were eating. The they were malnourished. Sucked. Yeah, they were tired. They were sixteen. A lot of them were 16, 17 years yeah. old. Wow. What I found out is in a lot of those long marches, they brought dogs. Did they? They brought dogs with them. You yeah. know me. I always, I always sniff out, the dog, out the dog fats. Dogs. Yeah. They brought dogs just as companion animals for those long marches. Just, just. Yeah, yeah but and a no, lot of the company's regiments had mascots, and they fucking loved those mascots. Yeah, because, but if 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 they ran out of food, they would shoot and kill the dog and eat Probably. the dog. Probably, I mean, that's what's gonna happen. Probably, yeah. But it's, yeah, but he, yeah, it happens. The, the, the dog's a true American. It's feeding feeding the troops. I mean, you know, dogs are always used in war, man, and a lot of so they also used in the Civil War. Uh, dogs were used to sniff, find the bodies, sniff out bodies. And really? Find, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the dogs were so close to the regiment that he that dog only knew. The regiment dudes, right? So would locate the bodies because yeah. go sniff them out. They still have they still have service dogs. Oh yeah, day. like dogs still go to Fucking Iraq and Afghanistan. Hell yeah, yeah. They use the German shepherds now. Yeah, they use all types of dogs. But yeah, no, those dogs die with full military honors. Of course, I get goosebumps when I see those videos on YouTube's when they a retiring police dog. Or a retiring military dog, and all the cops line up, and they fucking salute this thirteen-year-old German Shepherd. Walk German Shepherd has no idea what's going on. Someone's yeah. probably holding a goddamn beef jerky on the other <laughs> end and telling him to walk that way. Yeah, but the rest of them are treating him like a cop, and I think that's dope. Yeah, it's dope. Fucking animals, you know, and a lot of animals were killed in the Civil War because you know they were fighting straight up on farms. You had a lot of a lot of chickens getting killed, a lot of cows. We saw a lot of cows in Pennsylvania. We I did. mean, the state of Pennsylvania's got a lot, a of, lot fucking of fucking beef. Cows. Got a lot of beef. I'm trying not to eat red meat, though, anymore, because he was he. Yeah, and sometimes, you you know, here's the thing. A lot of uh, what Sherman did was dirty tactics. Sherman's Sherman, uh, General Sherman from the uh, Union Army, and he's famous for his Sherman's March to the Sea. That's South. right. He burned everything in his wake, and he killed all the livestock. They, uh, they commandeered all the livestock for their own soldiers, and they really did, uh, you know, they kind of broke the rules of war right? because they kind of they attacked civilians, burned civilian homes, yeah, burned the farms because their whole strategy was let's let's really break the back of the South yeah. and take away their supplies. Being so when bags. they marched through, it's such a tactic of war that's used over and over again. You see, the Russians did the same thing when Hitler invaded. Uh, the Russians burned their own fucking farms and retreated so there would be no supplies Just for them zero. to commandeer and use on their own when they got up there. What's the only city he didn't burn, Sherman? 
He didn't burn. Uh, he didn't burn Savannah, Savannah Georgia. Savannah, Georgia. Beautiful, he said it was fucking town. gorgeous. Beautiful town. We want to come down there because he was want to do a show in Savannah, Georgia. Listen to me. The next part of this podcast is going to be dope. We went to Harper's Ferry, West Virginia, that we got to talk about, and the Battle of Antietam, which was the single bloodiest day in American history still to this day. So the only way to get the second half of this podcast is go to patreon.com backslash Bay Ridge Boys and join our Cuds community. For the first half, thank you for listening for free. We appreciate it. If you want to hear more, go see more videos of all the stuff that we just spoke about. We got videos up on our Patreon page. You got to sign up, patreon.com backslash Bay Ridge Boys. Woo! If you're listening to this right now, you are a true hyena gay fan. Yes. You've, you've opened your wallets and your hearts to us, and we appreciate you're behind our Patreon wall. You're a part of the exclusive Cuz community, and this is the second half of our Wild History Tour weekend podcast. Yeah. We saw more history this weekend than I think we sought out to see. And I mean, we farted more than yeah. two men on battlefields ever. We might have farted just as much as some of those actual soldiers, cuz. Yo, I farted a lot in places I probably shouldn't have farted in. I farted a lot in Winchester. I farted, I definitely farted on the battlefield in Gettysburg. You farted I everywhere. definitely did. And you know the thing about your farts? What about them? I could pick them up in a line out. Yeah, like wet, right? The way, like, you know... A detective could make yep. a lineup of criminals and say which ones is. I could yep. pick you out. I could pick your farts out. I got a WSA. Why that you, Your asshole? farts have a unique sound. Yeah, yeah they got like a. They, there's like water with them. Yeah. No, I got a, I got a big hole for some reason. I don't know what it is. Maybe I got a wart in there. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> but they got a unique sound. Yeah. Okay. But so thank you, thank you for being Patreon members. We were talking about Gettysburg. Um, Gettysburg, as you know, a lot of you guys know, may not know, was the turning point yeah. of the of the war because the reasons why it was a turning point is because. The Union obviously had a big victory. The Confederates lost a lot of soldiers. The Union lost a lot of soldiers as well. But what it, the reason why it was a turning point is because Lee took basically, you know, it was a strategy like all for nothing. He took almost his entire army and his best generals, and they tried to invade the North. And because the plan was we, we get Gettysburg, Confederate keeps marching on, eventually gets Washington, D.C., holds Abraham Lincoln hostage and give us our country, blah, blah, blah. That, of course, doesn't happen. They get beaten all the way back into Maryland and then all the way back into Virginia. And at, and then after you take, you know, it's like you took that one big swing. And then from there on, it was just Union advancing, advancing, advancing. And then finally, of course, put down the rebellion and ultimately surrendered at, at a, a Potomatic uh, courthouse. Appomattox. Appomattox in Virginia. A lot of historians say that uh, Lee kind of knew. He knew that this was, this was his shot. If, if there was going to be a chance for them to win, it was going to be psychological. Yeah. Because he, he knew eventually the North was going to win. Right. I think a lot of Southerners knew that. They right. had more resources. They had more manpower. They also probably had, and subconsciously he might have known, they had right on their side. Their cause was better. Yeah. Their cause was fucking better. Like I was saying before, Lee, Lee didn't believe in slavery. No. He didn't believe in secession. He was doing it out of duty for Virginia. Yeah. The, the, he was, that's why he was the head of the Northern... What was it? The North, the the, uh, the the Army of Northern Virginia. Army of Northern Army Virginia. Army of Northern Virginia. The Army of the Potomac. He was a Virginian gentleman. So that was, you know, that, so he fucking that was his last. That was his psychological attempt to try to to just show them, like yeah. we got a, we won a major victory on your soil. Right. We're gonna fight a long time, and and it was gonna make them go, look, we don't want to fight a long time. Exactly. Let them have their fuck. We should have let. Why did we want Mississippi anyway? Part of me is going like, you know what? We should have let Mississippi secede. Who yeah. gives a fuck? Well, Vicksburg was the key to the whole war. That's where Ulysses S. Grant was fighting down in Vicksburg. I mean, we can't start talking about Vicksburg now. Why was there so many birds? A lot of Jews back then? <laughs> oh, <so> Gettysburg. <laughs> There's Vicksburg, a Lynchburg in Virginia, too. Fredericksburg, Fredericksburg. Yeah, well, I think, well, because, well, but the reason why they wanted Mississippi is Gulf of Mexico down yeah. there. So you need the water, cuz. Yeah, but I'm just saying, in retrospect, I'm going like, oh, yeah, you could. What yeah. do we need Mississippi yeah, but for? Then Brett you know? Favre, we wouldn't have Brett Favre, we wouldn't have been American. True. Yeah, this is True. Um, so that was basically, that's the turning point of the war. That was 1863. The war would eventually end in 1865. But, you know, you talk about the, the middle to the end. We didn't talk about the beginning, cuz. And the no. beginning, really, first of all, well, the very beginning, 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 we're going to talk about in just a few minutes. And that was at Harper's Ferry. That was the beginning, beginning. But the first, like, major battle where, like, things, the, the like, the, the country, north and south, saw the true horrors of war 
was the Battle of Antietam in wow. Maryland. Yeah. It was the first battle ever in in, uh, in American history and probably, I would say, world history because anything that happens first in America happens first for the world. Um, was first battlefield that was uh, f- uh, photographed before the dead were buried. Yeah. So all those Civil War photos, a lot of Civil War photos that you see with just herds of dead men uh, just lying on top of each other, most of them Confederate soldiers, uh, that was the Battle of Antietam. And uh, the Union Army, uh, Lincoln himself hired um, photographers from New York, always from New York. That's the theme. Hired them from New York. To well, take- you know, that's uh, you. It was probably okay to be gay, like honestly gay back then. What do you mean? It's on. It's okay to be honestly gay right now. I'm saying back then, New York was probably leading the way in that too. Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. So fashion yeah. photographers, you're gonna. I mean, it just. Hello? So, I'm not saying. <laughs> yeah. I'm not trying to stereotype. I'm just saying a lot of fashion photographers happen to be gay. They're good at fashion. Whatever what it, is. it is. Not yeah. all gays, yeah. but the ones that are good at fashion and yeah. are, I mean, a lot of times they're gay. Yeah. So he probably went and got the top fucking David LaChapelle guy to yeah, come 100%. down and be like, look, make this shit look really good. So, Because this was the first time the people were seeing like the reality, reality of what the of war, war was. And that's why Lincoln did that because he wanted the people to see the reality of war because he was hoping that that would make an uprising of people say we don't want this anymore let's just be a country and not be a country or let's be a country of course you don't want them to not be a country um but it kind of didn't work and here's the battle of antietam the the it, you had uh 23,000 uh people die in one day it was a three-day battle but one of those days 23,000 people died bloody in one day and at the time as we said before it was the most soldiers to die uh, ever, ever in one day, and more. Uh, I'm sorry. It was the mo- It was more soldiers died that day than all the previous wars America had fought combined. And it's so- ironic because we were in Ant- Antietam that part, and that was probably the most people that have ever been in that place. That place is. I yeah, mean, you're I talking mean, about nobody's in Antietam. That besides, place is dead. Yeah, it's just ghosts, and you got a couple of fucking places that sell sweet corn. Yeah, that's so about it. it. And it's ironic station. that on the day that it was the most populated was the day the most people died. Yeah. I mean, it was the only time there was ever probably more than 23,000 people in that place. Yeah, so that battle, that battle, that um, that was just the, the reason why so many people died is because it was kind of like a fluke. They they weren't, sp- all the armies were moving to, they, they were supposed to, each, the Union and the Confederate Army, they're supposed to have little, you know, groups go and fight in this town, go and fight in that town, but they just ran into each other in Antietam. The full fucking armies. Basically, all of the Union and all of the Confederacy just ran into each other. They didn't it, have GPS back they then. They didn't have GPS. They're so like, oh, shit, this <laughs> fucking guy. <laughs> yeah. Funny to see you here. It just was kind of accidental. The battle got so bad. It got so bad on day one, and there was so much death and carnage everywhere. that there, And the, the, um, uh, they ha- uh, an artist uh, an artist happened to be there, and he, and he drew a picture of this, that the, the under the flag of truce, the Confederate Army and the Union Army met in front of a church, they met after the first day of the battle and said, can we just take a fucking breather here so we can bury our dead? Like, we both need to bury our soldiers. So it was, imagine you, you're in, you got, conf- God, you were just killing each other five minutes ago, and now you got people from the Confederacy, people from the Union saying, look, we're going to still kill each other tomorrow. That's going to happen. You know that. Why are we here? We're going to kill each other and, and yell racial slurs across the battlefield lines. But just for a fucking minute, please. Can we just bury our dead? Because we're tripping all over the place yeah, I mean, here. We can't even stand up right we now. We can't even charge at each other. No, because it's just bodies. Yeah. And even with that, even with that, they still couldn't bury them all. As a matter of fact, uh, Antietam happened in September of 1862. Gettysburg would then happen uh, in July of 1863 on the way... Uh, the the when because you know Antietam is the North, so that was the first time the Confederacy Confederacy tried to invade the North. Um, on the way back, uh, just you know about a year later, when the Confederacy was trying to march up eventually on to their way to Gettysburg, they passed through the Battle of Antietam, and some of those bodies, Confederate soldiers, were still buried, were still uh, lying on the floor as is com- heavily decomposed. Um, you know, animal scavengers eating them. I mean, it was a horrifying scene. The Confederate soldiers said, and the, the smell was everywhere. And then, you know, they tried to bury them, some of them right there. There's still, still to this day, there's a lot of unmarked graves. So like, you know, where the visitor center is in Antietam, there could be a pile of Confederate soldiers that people just don't know. Yeah, I think in 2009, they found some bone fragment of uh, a, a New York boy down in Antietam. They did? And they identified him as a New York boy. It was some random bone. And uh, they gave him a proper military ben- burial 
in New York. Proper New York Mil- burial. All full military yep. what honors. That, what was that? Just Frank Sinatra they, playing? Bur- nah, yeah, they buried his bone. I mean, just like a bone, right? Yeah, it just came in like a nothing. little mini coffin like that. Yeah, just can't, yeah, a little tiny mini coffin, a teacup. Yeah, just put <laughs> in the ground. Yeah. Yo, so um, Antietam. It was about a nine mile wide battlefield. Um, when you go there, you see like first of all, all these battlefields are fucking beautiful. Gorgeous. They're gorgeous. So breathtaking. It's like, you're breathtaking. So if like so a couple. How of many te- times you want to punch me in the face for saying breathtaking? Again, go to yeah, well, you guys are on Patreon already. We po- we're going to post the videos up very shortly. They may even be up right now. There's a video where Giannis said breathtaking five times in a row that I have to stop recording, and I said, dude, I'm going to punch you right in the fucking face if you say breathtaking one more time because he could not stop saying breathtaking. And you got hard. Yeah, I got hard. <laughs> um, but. Uh, a, a lot of so it's like you know these, this beautiful scenery that just like turned into fucking carnage for a day. I mean, they said that the blood um, on in Antietam uh, on the battlefield because it was like a lot of like uh, uh, hills that there was like um, like a like a lake full of human blood um, after the battle was over. And uh, and see, here's the thing: in warfare back then, it, people. Like war would just come to your town, whatever town you live in. Just imagine looking outside your window, and instead of seeing a Seven Eleven there, you would see the Union versus the Confederacy fighting each other right outside your door. So, it, it people soldiers would come and invade your house because they were scared, or they needed to fucking use the bathroom, well, no, the outhouse, or they needed to just they wanted to get away from cover, or sometimes generals would just be like, "Look, we're taking over your house." Like there was a farm in Antietam that. Union just made it their headquarters. Uh, Confederacy just made it their headquarters. Like no questions asked. They're like, "Yeah, sorry, we're just gonna, we're just gonna have to uh, use your house because it's, we got to lay out the battle plan." So, and it was a big thing. Why, why we have so many firsthand accounts of this battle of the Civil War, and why like a lot of things are accurate because people can always say like, "Oh, you weren't there. How would you know?" A, a big, big thing to do back then was if the war came to your town, you would, you know, of course, maintain a safe distance and sit up on some kind of ridge, but you would watch the war. Like you're wa- like we would watch a basketball game right now. That's what you would watch. Yeah. You would just watch guys get their heads blown off and like laugh. And you wanted to see like people would say. I'm not sure if you'd laugh. Well, I mean, you never know. You probably would laugh. You sick probably, fuck. Yeah. You're a psychopath. Yeah. You, don't, you have a you have a tumor in your frontal lobe. But there would probably be guys up sitting up on the hill like eating popcorn, like calling out the stats. You're like, yeah, that's Private John Henry over there from the main second. Yeah. Dude's two for ten today. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Dope headshots. Yeah, he's got two bodies, but he's missed eight times, two for ten. Yeah, so they would see that happen. So we have a lot of, like, drawings and, you know, photography was just coming in. Photography was a brand new thing, but we got a couple of still photos um, of uh, of the Civil War. And the, the big thing with Antietam was so, so the Union wins, wins that battle. And they could have in 1862, September of 1862. This is big, cuz he's. Yeah, big. September of 1862. Don't forget, the war doesn't end until 1865. In September, when that battle happened, the Confederate Army was so decimated and so on the run that if the general at the time, General George McClellan, would have just advanced his northern troops and continued the fight and chased them, I'm talking about like five miles, just chased them, he would have obliterated the Confederate Army, like obliterated. Like they would have had like maybe 2,000 soldiers left versus the Union's 100,000. He would have completely obliterated them and ended the war right there, but he did not. He chose not to advance and then the war would drag on for another year as McClellan would get fired like a month later. Lincoln fired him. Well, because Lincoln wanted him to do that. Lincoln wanted him to do that. And McClellan didn't do it. McClellan wouldn't do it. And a lot of times they said McClellan could have the knockout punch, but he would not he would not deliver it. So much to the point where – so much at the t- during the time, some Union soldiers thought he was like a Confederate spy. They were like, why are we not advancing? We have them on the ropes. Why not kill them? And he would always come up with some bullshit reason why they couldn't. So it was just really about – you know, the war could have ended a lot earlier and there was a lot less bloodshed. Um, but then, you know, we wouldn't have this podcast episode. So in a way, it's like George McClellan, you're a fucking true cuz. You gave us podcast fodder. You did, but he ended up being a real cuck. Because then cuck, he yeah. ran against Abraham Lincoln, and, a, and he got slaughtered. What a cuck fuck. In I 1864, mean, yeah, Andrew McClellan tried to run against Abraham Lincoln. Probably because he was pissed he got fired. I mean, dude, I would be pissed, too, if I got fired. Yeah, I'm not going to lie to you, but, like, you don't try to run up against me for press, cuz. Yeah, you can't run up against a guy who just preserved the Union. I mean, so it was a slaughter. So that was the Battle of Antietam, and, again, we got— the videos up there, check them out. A lot of cuties on that battlefield. Of, as always. All, Oliver Wendell Holmes, who ended up becoming a Supreme Court justice, yeah. fought on that battlefield in Antietam. There's a picture of him in the visitor center, and I, I got to tell you, I couldn't take my eyes off him. He was cute. So, you know what? And guess what? 
he uh, uh, Clara Barton, the 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 angel of the battlefield, angel of the battlefield. She got that name at the Battle of Antietam, and then she would go on to found the Red Cross. That's right, for a, for a pretty dope. She took a bullet too, took in, a in ball. one of the chicken wings, only yeah. in the arm or some. But yeah, yeah. W- what she would do is the reason they called her the angel of the battlefield is because she would go out there and she would attend to the wounded during the battle. She didn't give a fuck. Good person. Yeah, Sweet real good girl. person. Sweet kid. Both sides. She would go out there, and if you if you were missing a leg or whatever, she would go out there. Yeah. And, you know. Yeah, see, that's what it was back then. I mean, there was no you would get you would get a limb amputated, and it was like there's no novocaine, there's no knocking you out. I mean, it's just sawing through your flesh and bone until it comes off. And then there was a good chance, there was a real good chance you were gonna die of gangrene because they didn't understand germs and bacteria yet back then. So, and they nobody gloved up. Everyone went in raw deezy, <laughs> and they would just pull bullets out of you or cut your leg off with the same chainsaw with the same saw that they just cut another person's leg yeah. off with. So a lot of people were dying gangrene and infections. Those were the most deaths in the Civil War. Yo, can you believe up until that point all the wars in the world were pre-anesthesia? Yes. That like and you can imagine every war dudes got injured. Yeah. And there was no such thing as anesthesia. Do you can you imagine having surgery done without anesthesia? Yeah, no, I can't. I that mean that's what bad. those dudes had to go through. Yeah. I mean it's it's brutal crazy yeah no there was no way to take away the pain and again more of the soldiers died from infection and disease than they did from bullets bullets and war wounds and you see i mean uh you know mortal mortal war wounds yeah and you see a lot of that also you know we had saw when you know uh antietam we had uh right before antietam we had been in winchester virginia and in winchester virginia and we had went to the uh civil war museum um in the shenandoah valley and uh, it's where it's Winchester, uh, Virginia is famous because first it was where George Washington really started to become like an iconic person. Before, first place he was elected to public office. First place he was elected to public office was Winchester, Virginia. This was before um, he, uh, you know, he was even, you know, we weren't even revolting. He yet didn't even have wooden teeth yet. He didn't even have wooden teeth. No, nah, he still had, he has porcelains back then. Yeah, nice porcies. And, um, but it was also where Thomas Stonewall Jackson had his headquarters um, in Winchester, Virginia before he, before he went on, on his campaign, uh, where he would eventually be shot and killed by his own soldiers um, by by accident. But see, that's that don't happen in the North. That was a sudden thing to happen. Yeah. We, we don't fucking shoot our own. No, we don't do you that. No, we don't do it because um, we ain't rats. So so uh, in that museum, though, we saw something. Um, we saw a lot of the Civil War weapons. We saw a lot of um, the, like different types of uniforms, which Giannis was getting hard at when you know see different kinds of fabrics. We saw a lot of uh, letters and stuff. But what we saw, which I thought was really cool, is we saw Civil War graffiti. That was dope. That was dope. Yeah. So in the Civil War, in the Civil War, uh, uh, in the museum that we were in, it used to be an old courthouse. But before it was a courthouse, it was used when the when the armies were fighting in Winchester because there was three battles in Winchester, Virginia. They used it to house um, Union uh, prisoners, prisoners of war. Some of the prisoners of war from Gettysburg were housed in the museum that we were in. And there was a few deserters a few that des- went to jail there too. Yeah, that went to jail. And it was funny. And again, we got we got these videos up there. What you see, it's like the male brain has always been the same. We've always been the same. Oh yeah. Yeah, we've always been the same. So they, you know, they had pencils back, you know pencil and paper they would give it to you. you could write home or whatever from jail they would let you do that but we saw some graffiti we saw you know people you know uh, uh counting the days that they were in prison which was kind of hard to see them I mean, you saw one guy was in there for like a thousand days like it was just nuts and then and then uh we saw somebody who just you know they could draw whatever they wanted they just drew a face and two titties this is yeah. true he's not drew, making this up a pair of tits one in one of the yeah. cells now what he's talking about is in this uh in this courthouse right it used to be the courthouse then it became the jail down behind the plaster, they sort of immortalized some of the areas where they found graffiti on the original walls. Yeah. And in one of those places, the dude just drew a woman with titties. Which so is, he could give himself something to crank to at, crank, to. To crank to. To crank to. Two perfect tits. Yeah, they were nice. That's what it was. Um, and that, I mean, that's what that... Actually, you know, it's what, another thing we learned in, in every every, like... Civil War battalion. They everybody wanted. They were hoping that one of the soldiers would be an artist because they would just ask that artist during when they were camping, you know, or like in between like battles. They would ask that artist if they could just draw them puss. They just wanted true that, story. That's how guys used to jerk off back then. That was porn. Was it? An artist would draw a fucking hot piece from whatever you liked, and then that's what the guys would spank it to. A lot of and a day. lot spanking was a big part of being a soldier. They spanked off a lot. Yeah, the masturbation in the Civil War was wild. Yeah, and a little like guys they would spend a lot of time. Together together too you know yeah, I mean, you know that happened we're gonna do a whole episode on homosexuality we and wars we're gonna we get will. to that we will um 
But you know what's funny too about that museum that I thought was hilarious? First of all, the museum is awesome. Yeah. And our boy Zach was oh, awesome. Boy, go to Zach Attack. Zach Attack 96 is his Instagram. Best tour guide in the South. Zach was a good kid, great kid. He get uh, he he let me uh he let me buy a finger puppet from him. I bought a finger puppet, and uh and then gave me a finger puppet on the house, which is good. And then he gave us some fucking nice history facts. He actually told us. Remember, I like the fact about the bar. Past the bar. Yeah, past yeah. the bar. Oh, the old court, the old uh, English style courthouses used to have a bar right in front of the the judge. The, the, the the lawyers' tables. Yeah. Between the lawyers' tables and the judge, and when the lawyer would go past. The bar to talk to the judge. That's where the expression "pass the bar" came from. That's where the exam is named after. Yeah, because you could only pass that bar to talk to the judge if you had passed your law exam. Exact the moon yeah. though. So passing the bar. Um, that's where it came from, which was a co co cool little fun fact. Um, and I also like what you did in that museum. What? You, there was a little donation box, and you yeah. know what Chrissy D did for the union guys. Listen to this, because I'm a true soldier. True, true soldier. You, true union blue. Right in front of Zach, because even though right we were, in front of Zach, because he's, he's a nice Virginia. kid, but he's from Virginia. He's a Southern Confederate. He's a Southern kid. Yeah. So what what Chrissy D did for the donation box? He took out a Lincoln, a $5 fiver, bill. and he slid it in there, and he let Zach know I'm putting that in there for the yeah, union. Yeah, and I faced it so that Lincoln's face was sticking outside of the clear clear donation box, just to say, look. You may think, don't forget who fucking won this war. Yeah. It was Abe and the boys. But here's the thing. If you're ever in Winchester, Virginia, the cool thing to go to, it's it's they got a lot of cool artifacts in there, for sure. Yeah. And because the museum really doesn't have that much funding, I mean, these artifacts, I mean, I mean, you could pull them off the wall. You could pull some of these guns right off the fucking <laughs> right wall. The they were held up by wall. shoelaces. <laughs> yeah. It was unreal. Yeah. And if you don't believe that uh, Chrissy was farting in the museum and farting on the battlefield, we have a video of that on our Patreon page. So enjoy yeah. that. There's yeah. that one. Remember I caught that video? Unexpected. Oh, yeah, dude. We were I looking at the hard. painting and then all of a sudden Chrissy just fucking blah, 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 ripped it right in the middle of the museum. Yo, yeah. Disrespectful. I, yeah. Dude. <laughs> Wild. <laughs> I shit my pants on that one. Yeah. So that was so that was Winchester, Battle of Gettysburg, Battle of Antietam. And then the last thing we did. Now we're going back in time. We're going back in time to the beginning of the Civil War. Before the beginning. Before even the be This is just an event that sparked the country even to start to get fucking enraged. Yeah, that's right. He moved it forward, though. It he really it is forward. because of him. So we went. And he was fucking wild. So the wild man we're talking about is John Brown. Harper's Ferry, West Virginia. If you guys ever get a chance to go to Harper's Ferry, fucking go. It's the most beautiful, picturesque town I've ever. I mean, it's so beautiful. It's probably what Ricky Martin's asshole looks like. <laughs> I don't. I, I can't. I don't. I can't. I don't know how to describe how beautiful Harper's Ferry, West Virginia is. Thomas Jefferson said, yeah. "There's a place uh, about three football fields up the hill. Yeah, uh, right there on um, on the coastline, right on." Harper's Valley. It's good. Now they call it Jefferson's Rock. Yes. And he said, the view is worth traveling, what, like 6,000 miles down the some Atlantic. Some poetic fucking Some poetic shit. shit. Yeah. Just to see the view of the two rivers meeting. Yeah. The Shenandoah and the Potomac or whatever yeah, it was. Whatever. And yeah. they fucking flush it. It's beautiful. It's just beautiful. It's like, it doesn't even matter what the names were. What it's I, gorgeous. I mean, it does matter, but I mean, it's fucking so gorgeous. And here's an interesting fact. Before we get to John Brown, just because we want to stay with the, just the Civil War thing, I just want to get this fact out. Um... The the uh, West Virginia, beautiful state. We know it as like, you know, it's got bad stereotypes, West Virginia. They say it's like a hick state, redneck state, backwoods state. You know, you think you think about West Virginia, you think about like, you know, that really stereotypical South. But it ain't true. Let me let me let me tell you boys a little something. Boys and girls, cousins and cousettes and people who don't specify gender. Um, West Virginia in 1861 starts fighting in the Civil War on the Confederate South, secedes. Well, the state of Virginia secedes. In 1863, the western half of the state of Virginia calls itself West Virginia and decides to secede from Virginia and the Confederacy. So a double secession. Wow. And starts to fight in the Union North. And in 1863, President Abraham Lincoln does not recognize Virginia, Robert Lee's Virginia, Richmond. He doesn't recognize that as a state. The only thing he calls Virginia is, is what West we now Virginia. know as West Virginia. And what happened was because obviously that was a fucking horrible thing to the south that was a bad thing they got upset about that virginia specifically were like what the fuck are you cucks doing the rest of the south was like come on you guys are being assholes they st that was the first kind of quote fake news that started to happen is virginia and the rest of the south started to say that west virginia and west virginians were backwoods hick motherfuckers dumb as dirt dumb asses blah 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 and some of that uh 
some of that stereo, some of those stereotypes still exist today. Because you can't tell me why when you think of West Virginia, you think of them backwards people. Because when we went there, they all seem like pretty intelligent, nice, beautiful people. And it's the truth is, is because some of that stuff still from the Civil War carries today. And 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 to be honest with you, I'm going to be honest with you. I made all that up, but it sounded fucking dope. <laughs> I, I mean, that. that sounded dope. But what you didn't make up is yeah. that that happened. Is that that happened? And that West Virginia fought with the Union. Yeah. And what's even if you want to know, if you really question how wild this is, a lot of those guys from West Virginia had gray uniforms on at the beginning of the war. Yeah. And they switched them to fucking blue uniforms and started fighting for the fucking Union. So guess what that means. West Virginia was the first bisexual state. They were, they went they went both played ways. Both teams. They played both um, ways. So that's Harpers. We're in Harpers Ferry, West Virginia, and uh, eighteen months before the war. Eighteen months before the war, very big thing happens there. John Brown, who was wild, who was fucking wild, wild. has Look already he already killed like five slavery dudes yeah. before this. Look at the videos of him that we took. On, he looks on like Patreon Rob right Shapiro, now. the comedian. Or just Google him. Yeah, I mean. And see, the thing that I like about John Brown is like they have they have kind of like hit pictures of him for like like 20 years. Like it, and he just gets crazier and crazier. <laughs> every does. picture I mean, first, he, just like a normal guy. The first picture, he looks like Andrew Schultz. He yeah. just looks like a normal fucking, you know, skinny white guy, you know, that has some crazy opinions and wants to be black. That's just what he looks yeah. like. You know, he just looks like that kid. So and that's what John Brown <laughs> was. And then as it goes on and on and on, yo, by the end, he looks like fucking Santa Claus on crystal meth. He does. He genuinely looks like a fucking psychopath yeah. by the end, by the time he gets killed. But what he did was he went down. This is 18, I want to say 1859. The war started in 61. This is 1858 or 59. He marches all the way from fucking bleeding Kansas. Bleeding Kansas. Where they were trying to fight to keep Kansas. He was a part of, like, the abolitionists that wanted to keep Kansas free. Keep Kansas for free. Because at that time, while the Civil War started, any time, you know, when we were expanding the West, Louisiana Purchase and all that shit, one state would be free, one state would be slaves. So Kansas was that tipping point where it's like, is it going to, it's, it's the first time where government didn't pick it to let the people choose. And then shit got wild. Got wild. And John Brown, who's originally from New York, Elmsford, New York, was uh was one of the main, he killed like five or six dudes down there. Took five a, pro-slavery bodies before a, he even got to Harper's Ferry. Yeah, because he's a fucking wild maniac. Yeah. So he goes down to Harper's Ferry, which is where the U.S., at the time, the U.S. armory was. They had over 100,000 weapons there. And in the middle of the night, he just kills the guard. He kills one of the guards, uh, one of the soldiers guarding the armory. And Only just, a couple dudes, too, right? Yeah, it was him. And, two of his sons. Two of his sons. He had he had twenty one people with him. So twenty one dudes. Kind of deep. He was That's kind not of that deep. deep, cause I mean it's deep enough. Back in those days, it's deep enough when you're not expecting any. You know, when he's got the guard is probably just jerking off to fucking you know pencil and paper porn, and and yeah. then all of a sudden this guy rolls in looking like that with twenty dudes. Yeah, but, I mean, come on. I mean, yeah, it's balls. Don't forget though. how fucking wild John Brown looked. He at was <laughs> fucking wild. Yo, he was wild. I, Yo, if me and if me and you were guarding the armory, then I would just be like, "Yo, dude, you are fucking, fucking wild. wild." He and made me feel em- he made me feel embarrassed for calling myself wild yeah, after like, I saw him because he was fucking wild. When you see his face, wild. you're like, "That's the fucking." De-. If you want to be a true wild hyena, you better fucking go uh, Halloween. You better go with John Brown. Frederick Douglass even said famously, "He yeah. said, I will live for the slaves. This dude is gonna die for him because he's fucking wild." Yeah, that's a true quote. Even I, Frederick Douglass said, yeah. "He's fu- Frederick Douglass, a true Bay Ridge boy. He is a true." Yeah. And he called John Brown yeah. fucking wild. wild. He marched down there with 20 dudes trying to start a revolution. Tried to take over the entire U.S. armory. <laughs> yeah. The entire country's armory. That's like 20 dudes just trying to fucking march into West Point and be like, this is our fucking school Yeah, now. and at first, he did pretty good. Yo, at first, so he killed a couple of dudes. He takes control of a barn, and he's got pretty, uh, pretty decent amount of weapons yeah. in there. Uh, ironically, first dude that died, was slave was a freed uh a freed slave freed slave freed slave nobody knows how it happened but but he got popped and they got mu- popped. then they mutilated his body uh no they didn't mutilate summer. his body what do you mean no they didn't mutilate his body he was he was just a, d- a dude he was like a night watchman or oh something. that's right yeah one the first the... dude who got killed yeah because here's john the... brown's boys killed him that's right john brown's boys killed him nobody knows what happened you're right because um, what happened, you know, what it was like back then is, I mean, don't forget, at the time you're in, uh, you're not even in West Virginia, you're in Virginia, Virginia. So they see a bunch, they see, you know, fifteen black guys marching through their town at that time. The 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 people of Harper's Ferry, uh, Virginia, at the time, were shooting at John Brown before the military was. They were trying to defend their homeland because they're like, what is happening? Because the slaves are are up. Nobody had done that yet. Nobody had nobody had done a slave uprising yet. Well, Nat Turner did it. Well, not, yeah, but he was a slave. Yeah. Yeah. 
but but they put it down quick. I don't know about yeah. Nat Turner. Well, yeah. Do you was... have anything to offer about Nat Turner? He killed some dudes. Yeah, but do you know anything about the history? He killed some dudes. You're fucking wild. I'm fucking wild. Yeah, you're fucking wild, yeah. hyena. Um, I think the townspeople raised up afterwards. I, not at first, though. No, do, well, well, because General Robert E. Lee, who goes on to become head of the Confederate Army at the time, was just the head of the Northern Virginia Army. Uh, he was a Virginia colonel. Army. He was a colonel in the Virginia Army. It takes him two days to get there. Yeah. So they're holed up in that. John Brown and his boys are holed up in that barn for two days, but they're still cat taking fire from the townspeople because the townspeople wanted them to get the fuck yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. They didn't know what was going on. Yeah. So they had to wait for Robert E. Lee. And then as soon as Robert E. Lee was a Marine. I mean, these are the these are the this is the Marine Corps yeah. coming in. So by the time Robert E. Lee gets there, he gives him one chance to get out. John Brown says, No, go fuck yourself, suck my dirty beard. It's exactly what he said. Yeah. He says, no way, not, you know, not, he, John Brown was like, uh, you have to free every slave in America and then I'll come out. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, that's my demand. Those are my terms. My terms, you got to free every slave around the world right now. Just say you'll do it and then I'll come out. And John Brown was hoping he brought, he got all those, uh, what were those pikes with like, yeah, with the, with he the brought spears. a bunch of like wooden sticks with like, yes. with spears on them and he was going to hand them out to all the slaves. No, nobody moved. Nobody yeah. did a thing. He was banking on the entire town, yeah. just getting his back, yeah. and and kind of and kind of um and kind of getting uh, uh rising you know, to the cause. Rise, nobody did it. I got to be honest with you. Nobody. I mean, he probably was like, <laughs> none of you fucking guys want to take a chance at this. Yeah. I brought all these sticks. Yeah. Nobody wants to help me. Nah. And they're like, dude, you just look too wild. Yeah. Like, we like, would have helped you. Yeah. But you look like a lunatic. Also, it was a suicide man. I mean, at that time, because it was a mission. way ahead of its time. Yeah. Complete suicide mission. So what happens is, is Robert E. Lee and his Marine Corps take a few shots into the barn, take a ladder, break down the door. The fight is over in three minutes. Literally three minutes, three it's minutes. over. John, when Robert E. Lee's, from Robert E. Lee's account, this is his account. Now, don't forget, he's a Confederate guy, you know, whatever. Robert E. Lee says that when he went in there, the slaves that were part of John Brown's crew were cowering in the, uh, uh, huddled in the corner saying that we don't want to fight. We never wanted to fight with John Brown. You know, they were basically, from what Robert E. Lee was saying, is that they were, you know, basically uh, dragged to do that. So Robert E. Lee's account is, he may have, he may have a good cause, but he, he, he's just a madman. Robert E. Lee's whole thing was, you're not, you're not, the reason why nobody uh, uh, came with you, the reason why nobody had your back is because you're a true lunatic. And, and he called him a madman. He has documented, Robert E. Lee says he was a madman and his cause was not noble. So they hung him a couple of days later, but what that what what happened after that is because he had initially John Brown had initially asked Frederick Douglass, you know, the top come with me, cause. top abolitionist guy, uh, and have, of course had an ear to uh, had an ear to President Lincoln. Um, he said, um, I, "No, I don't want to go with you because it's in fact a suicide mission." But what Frederick Douglass took, and that's why he's such a genius man, is he basically took the story of John Brown and the uprising, you know, uh, of, of someone, you know, uh, a man who's, you know, a white man fighting to to free the slaves. He took that story and put it through the North, through the South, and that's what kind of galvanized war. The beginning, that happening, started because the North said, you know what, you're right, slaves shouldn't, they are free, they, they, they shouldn't, uh, you know, they are human beings, they're not property, and the South said, shit. This guy just got a bunch of slaves got, to uprise. They got scared, yeah. Yeah, we don't want any of our slaves to uprise, so they yeah. started to treat them even worse. Yeah. And then war is going to start in about a year and a half after that. Yeah. Um, they what, started to, like, form militias and shit and, like, yeah. to, we got to protect the South because yeah. if this motherfucker that's going to come again. Yeah. What's really cool is John Brown got hanged, didn't say a word. He slipped one of the dudes a note, yep. and the famous words on that note were, now I'm positive. I'm paraphrasing now. I'm putting it in Bay Ridge Boy terms because I don't remember exactly yeah. how. Because everyone spoke eloquently back then. You yeah, notice that? Yeah, can't speak like that. Everyone was like a poet back then. Yeah, of course. Everything. So even John Brown, who was a m wild madman, what he said was something beautiful about how now he's positive that the sins of this land will only be expunged or, or gotten rid of by blood. By blood. He knew it was going to get He fun. knew it was coming. He knew it was going to get bloody. And it did get bloody, and then the Civil War happened, and uh, yeah. And then this podcast happened. And also, while you were in Harper's Ferry, West Virginia, we just I just want to give a shout out to uh, to uh, the History Tweet. Uh, what was the name of their company? That was a nice little cherry on the top of our beautiful yeah. romantic weekend. Yeah, was tell going me about into, it while I, while I find their email. We went to a, uh, we were walking up the hill, because Harper's Ferry is all on a hill. We're walking up the hill, we go into this candy store, because we just wanted to maybe get some sweets. And this candy I store. I wanted to get some you sweets. You want to get some sweets. Yeah. So the candy store was basically a candy store, but was set up uh, in a way that it 
explored the history of candy from the beginning of mankind, pretty much beginning of yes. civilization from yeah. like way back BC and the yes. Egyptians all the way to like n present day. So they had like these sections that showed which candies were popular in which times and what people's uh, in different places in different back times. To Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia, the I mean, Greeks, they used to eat bugs. They poured a little sugar on bugs or whatever. Yeah. And that was their sweets. Native Americans used to eat bugs. Yeah. And, and it's called True Treats Candy. And it the it's the uh, and thank you so much uh for for uh for giving us a tour of your candy shop. And uh and you know, they said they're gonna donate to the Patreon page. I hope you did. If not, fuck you. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm <laughs> no, kidding. He, she's I'm, a sweet lady. I'm kidding, you were a sweet lady. But, he, you know, but, we but mean she it. would laugh at that because yeah. we were joking around with her like that. But you gave us a great tour of great, the candy shop. Great tour awesome. of the candy shop. Uh you told us that chewing gum was invented on Staten Island, which is fucking wild. Um and uh and it's the only candy store in the whole country that uh, makes and produces candy at the time, uh, makes it to taste exactly like it tasted um, in that time period. So they, what they basically did was did a whole bunch of research, like historical research, on what those people, what candy those people ate, and then they recreated it. They right. recreated it exactly the way it was back in those times. Yeah, so basically what I just said. Um, so, yeah, so, so, uh, yeah. just more details. No, more detail. No, you said it more poetic because yeah, yeah, you got I some said. snooze in your mouth. You're yeah. fucking wild. Um, I, uh, so yeah, we had a great time on our, on our civil war, uh, tour on our history tour. Thank you guys so much for supporting the podcast. Uh, the Bay Ridge boys, uh, history hyenas, our Patreon, everything. We appreciate the love from the fans. And, uh, listen, any, anything you guys want, if there's a hit piece of history that you guys want us to talk about or topic that you want us to talk about email us at um what's the email history hyenas at riotcast.com that's it we're gonna we double do, check on that right now white wasp white, white wasp, wasp is you gonna look at it yeah brb.patreon I... brb. 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 at gmail at gmail brb.patreon at gmail.com is what mini mussolini has told us and that I would think that that would be the right one. Or you could just hit us up with DMs. Yeah, just DM yeah. us. Christy Comedy. Yeah, yeah. Giannis Giannis Papas. It's moving yeah. to our DMs. Send a little furniture. We know you got to send a couple of furniture emojis so we know that you're a true Bay Ridge boy fan. Because if you don't send furniture, I'm not going to open it. Exactly. You got to send furniture first, and then I know that's your signal. Be like you're a trusted confidant, and you're not. You're not. You know. You're not one of my uh, ex girlfriends. Fucking. You know. You're not trying to get me to a trap. Uh, to pay more child support. You're not a revolutionary rat. Yeah. Shout out to episode two, two, three, three, three. three, three. Um, yeah, so thanks so much for listening. We appreciate it. <laughs>